What's up everyone, my name is Marie, welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video I am actually back in the world of Mount Kamarebi. It's been a while since I've built anything in Mount Kamarebi. So yeah, I don't know, I just, I really felt like going back here and building something cutesy and pretty. And this is actually a tiny home and it's Scandinavian inspired, so... Mount Kamarebi is a weird world choice for a Scandinavian inspired tiny home. I realized that, but at the same time, I was kind of intrigued by the contrast that it would create. If that makes any sense, like Mount Kamarebi is Japan inspired, so not Scandinavian by any means. But at the same time, I kind of feel like Scandinavian homes are a little bit more on the minimalistic side and so are modern Japanese homes in my opinion or from what I know at least. So it's a little bit of a contrast but at the same time it kind of goes together in my opinion at least. So yeah that's why I figured I should build this Scandinavian inspired tiny home in Mount Kamarebi. And like I said, I was trying to keep it on the minimalistic side of things. However, I don't know if I succeeded. I am really not that great at keeping things minimalistic in The Sims because I like clutter. I like cluttering things up. I like making homes and rooms look lived in. I like going overboard with landscaping, for example. So for the longest time, I was kind of debating with myself if I could do excessive landscaping, if this was going to be a minimalistic tiny home. Because essentially, I mean, the landscaping is not part of the actual build. It's not part of the house. So maybe the landscaping, the plants were already there, but I don't know if that's cheating. So I don't know if I can call this a minimalistic home or not. I don't think I can, but for me, it's on the minimalistic side, if that makes any sense. Like, I didn't use a lot of accessories or decorations on the outside of the build. I chose very simplistic windows and doors, very modern, very basic, very clean. So that's on the minimalistic side. Like, everything is very modern, very simple, very basic, but at the same time sophisticated and pretty, in my opinion at least. So yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of on the minimalistic side, but maybe not quite. Let me know what you think. I'm very curious to know if you think that this tiny home would qualify as minimalistic. I don't think so, but I mean, I can try, right? I can still try. I do like how it came out though. I really like the neutral color scheme. And because this is Scandinavian inspired, I'm not saying it's a Scandinavian tiny home, so don't come for me if it's not accurate. I always think that that's a little bit scary to say when something is so-and-so inspired. Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not from Scandinavia. I don't know a lot of things about Scandinavian architecture or just architecture in general. I just like the, to build in The Sims and look for inspiration from specific styles. And that's what I did for this tiny home as well. So I looked up a whole bunch of Scandinavian homes on Pinterest. And I didn't really have a specific image for this one for reference. But I did look at a whole bunch of different ones and I don't know, kind of gathered all the inspiration and ideas that I could find. And then I just started building and this is what I came up with. So for me, this is Scandinavian inspired. And I think it kind of looks Scandinavian to what I think is Scandinavian. My cat just walked to me. Hi. I feel like it's becoming a regular thing where my cat is popping into the voiceover at some point. <laughs> she hasn't jumped on my lap today yet though, so maybe that will be um, something for later. But for now, she's just lying on the couch and being very cute. Um, so that's that for my cat. Um, now I completely lost my train of thought though. Um, but yeah, 
As I said before, this is Scandinavian inspired and I also went for the interior. I went for very beigey, like creamy whites and lighter wood tones. So a lot of neutrals, a lot of white, a lot of creamy whites and barely any color. And the colors that I did use are very neutral and very toned down. So yeah, when it comes to color scheme and stuff, I feel like this house is pretty minimalistic. But as you can see, I went crazy with the landscaping. Well, not crazy, but I definitely placed a whole bunch of debug items rocks i felt like this house would go like the rocks would go really nicely with this house so i just placed a whole bunch of rocks and i don't know maybe those rocks were already there i don't feel like they were specifically placed there by the person that lives here i feel like the landscaping is just kind of doing its own thing and it's not very manicured or anything so yeah i don't know just let me know if you, if you feel like this would be minimalistic or not. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we are moving on to the inside of the house. I went for a very basic white walls and light wood floors. And for the kitchen backsplash, I also used white, um, white tiles and stuff. So yeah, the color scheme, it's very cohesive. It's very matchy matchy, but I didn't want there to be any sort of distraction or something that pops out, if that makes any sense. Because like I said a thousand times, I tried to keep it on the minimalistic side of things. So that's what I did. I think I succeeded. The house is very small though. So that's one thing that made it a little bit more difficult to keep it minimalistic because there is not a whole bunch of space. So it kind of looks full quite fast or quite easily. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I kept this color for the backsplash. I know I used that color of the tile somewhere Maybe in the bedroom, I don't quite remember. Maybe I get rid of it in the kitchen. Maybe I don't, I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. But as you can see, a lot of neutrals. Um, oh, there we go, I actually swapped it out for a white tile, so there is that. But yeah, as I said, the house is very small, so it looks cluttered and full very easily. I also used the open shelving counters from Snowy Escape. And in order to make the house look at least somewhat realistic, I did have to clutter them up. So I tried to keep the clutter as basic and simple and clean as possible, but still you can see that there is clutter, there, there's items there. So that makes it a little bit more, I don't know, cluttered and filled up in that way. But yeah, I still wanted this house to be realistic. And that is always a thing that I struggle with whenever I try to make something minimalistic. Because I want it to be minimalistic, sure, but I also want it to look like a real house and I want it to look lived in. So how do you do that? I don't know how you would do that. If you have experience with that or if you have any ideas on that, please let me know because I really wanna learn. I really wanna build something that's actually minimalistic sometime but still a real house, if that makes sense. So yeah, I just, it's something that I struggle with, but I tried for this house and I think I succeeded. I kept the clutter in the kitchen as clean as possible, like I said, but I really liked the way that it turned out. I was having a lot of fun cluttering up this space. Um, and yeah, I think it looks really cute and very clean and easy on the eyes, which also has something to do with the very cohesive and basic color scheme, I think. I did place down a couple of plants here and there because I did want there to be some decorations, just not a whole lot. And here I was trying to do something fun with the dining table, but it just wasn't working. It just took a little bit, it took up a little bit too much space. So I decided to place a couple of shelves on the back of the counters, the island counters. They're not actually island counters, they're regular ones, but they kind of function as an island. So. I created that little extension on the back of the counters with the shelves and placed a couple of bar stools underneath it. I did swap them out later. I, I'm using the ones from Tiny Living right now, but I swapped them out for the ones that came with Snowy Escape a little bit later because they're a little bit like smaller and easier to like scoot underneath the shelf, if that makes sense. Um, you can't actually sit on the counters or on the bar stools because I did place them underneath the shelf, as you can see. 
so you can't actually use them, but they still look cute and your sims will use the dining table if they want to have dinner or breakfast or lunch or whatever. <laughs> They'll just use the little dining table to actually eat at. So that's perfectly functional. And here you can see that I use the couch and the chair from Tiny Living, mainly because they're easy to use and very neutral in colors. Um, I One thing I did not place down actually in this house is a TV because I didn't, I didn't feel like this house actually needed a TV. I don't know. I also didn't really have space for it, given the fact that the couches are facing the room, if that makes sense. Like the couch is not facing a wall where you could place a TV, if that makes sense. I could have placed it somewhere else. Like I could have placed a TV above the dining table, for example. But I didn't really want to because I didn't really like the look of a TV in here. And I figured the sim that would live here is probably very modern and with the times, if that makes sense. So they probably use their laptop to watch TV and watch Netflix and whatever. Um, so I did eventually place a laptop uh, on the dining table. So your sim will have that if you want to use this house for gameplay. You could also, of course, always just put a TV on the wall somewhere. And then that should be very, um, that should be functional as well. But yeah, I just decided not to because I just didn't like the way that it looked. And I thought this house would look a lot better without a TV. So that's what I decided to do. But here you can see that this is the tiny little bedroom with a double bed that's actually accessible from both sides. So this house, I didn't mention this before at all, but this house has room for two Sims total. Um, however, there is a lot of space left on the lot though. So if you wanna use this house for two Sims or maybe one Sim at first, and then maybe want to extend the house, build an extra bedroom or whatever, then that should be fairly easy to do. Um, but yeah, the bedroom is also very minimalistic in color scheme, a lot of white and lighter wood tones, as you can see. And I think, in my opinion, the whites in this bedroom are so satisfying, like the bright white dresser and the white chair next to it. I just really like how clean it looks. And it was just a nice change of pace for me because I always like to use pops of color throughout my Sims builds. I just love playing around with color and experimenting with colors. So this was just a nice change of pace to keep everything as toned down as possible. It was quite difficult and I wasn't sure if I was liking it at first, but I actually do really like it. And then as you can see, the only bathroom in this house that I just totally talked over, um, but the only bathroom in this house is actually an ensuite. So if you have guests coming over, they're gonna have to walk through your bedroom to be able to get to the bathroom. But I don't know, I think that that's all right for a tiny house like this. I mean, it makes sense. And the bathroom is also only three tiles big. So it's just your very basic shower and toilet bathroom. And then they're gonna have to use the sink in the kitchen to wash their hands, but it's all very small. This house is very small, so it's not that big of a deal in my opinion. And then here I try to create a little bit of a like fun outdoor area. So I placed a big grill that I actually really like there and also a nice seating area. Everything is very bright and white outside here as well. Um, and also an outdoor bin, of course, so you should be fine there gameplay wise. And then I just played around with a little bit of extra landscaping here and there. And I played around with um, the terrain paint as well, but then that's already it for the build. So let's hop into the game and I'll show you the house. So here we have the house. There is not a whole lot to show you because it's very small. I really enjoy this wall mounted mailbox. I think it's very cute and just perfect for this like minimalistic looking house. But yeah, I'll show you the back first. It's nothing fancy, nothing special, but it looks like a very nice place to just sit and hang out. Then I have this sort of hidden grill in between these half walls. I think it looks very cute and tucked away in there. Then when we walk into the house, it's very cohesive, very neutral, very minimalistic in here. But here we have the kitchen. I think the kitchen is my favorite part of this build. Even though it's cluttered, it still kind of looks 
clean and minimalistic in my opinion. And I really like this shelving unit behind the counter with the bar stools that's not usable at all, but it still looks cute in my opinion. Then here we have the dining table with a laptop. And then here we have the seating area, the living area, very simple, no TV or anything, but there is an accessible bookcase. So that's something for your sim to do. And then here we have the very minimalistic bright white bedroom that I think is so satisfying to look at. I don't know why. It's just something about the simplicity of this room really appeals to me. I really like this area with the dresser and the chair and the mirror. It's just so simple, but it does the job and I enjoy the way it looks. And then here we have the tiny little three tile bathroom, which I don't know what happened here, but something happened there. But yeah, that's actually it for this tiny little house. So this Scandinavian tiny home comes in at 28,425 simoleons. So it's a little bit over starter home budget, but not too expensive though. So it should be quite easy to save up for this one. But that's actually already going to be it for this build. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. You can definitely go ahead and download this build off the gallery if you want to. My username on there is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. So if you want to subscribe to my channel, feel free to do so. You can also leave a comment down below. And if you want to be notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell notification icon and you should be fine. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next build. Bye!